Good morning, once again, brothers and sisters, dear loved ones. Um, we're going to continue on God's divine blueprint, and I re listened to the word thanks to Brother Jason and his efforts, those stuff is on YouTube. And I, I asked God, what should I share? And the important thing is that whatever we can prepare, when you are in a place that God positions you, it's important to speak what God says. Amen? And one of the important things that's really, uh, one of the important things that's priority for God, for us to know and understand, is His blueprint for success in our relationships and for success in wealth. If I had to give a title of the for the message today is, it would be, what is God's blueprint for success in relationships and wealth? And this is the key. We heard the report from Doc. Excellent report, Doc. Thank you for that. For sharing with us what we missed out, what we can aspire to, to have in our families, what we need to be mindful of. And the key is if you want to have more success in your relationship, if you want to have a more blessed relationship, if you want to have more wealth, we have to become more. To have more, we must become more. Okay, let's, say, let's, let's try an exercise. Repeat after me. To have more, I must be more. More like what? More like Jesus. How? How? And that is the problem. We know what to do. We don't necessarily know how to do it. Today as we go through the scriptures, I know Doc wasn't talking about my six pack or my three pack or my two pack. I got no pack. I got a barrel here. Small barrel. <laughs> right? I know what I am. I know how I am. I, I'm honest with myself. And the key thing, as we, as we just prayed for the students today, the key thing is our eyes. Say eyes. eyes. But even a blind man can see. And what we want today is for God to open up our spiritual eyes to see what and how we have to to do, how we do the things we need to do so that we can become more, so that we can have more. Would you like to have more? Yes or no? Okay. We're going to go to Second Samuel chapter 11. Um, already I can see God is shifting me here from my notes. Second Samuel chapter 11. And it's a very good and sad story. It's good for the lessons, but it's sad that it had to come through that way. Second Samuel chapter 11. And this is the time of King David. It happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. So this is good. They defeated enemies. David was doing what he wanted to do. He's king. He didn't go to battle. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her. And she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity, and she had returned to her house. And the woman conceived, so she sent and told David, and said, I am with child. Then David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah had come to him, David asked him, asked how Joab was doing, and how the people were doing, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Uriah Go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah departed from the king's house, and a gift of food from the king followed him. 
But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and he did not go down to his house. So when they told him, we told David, saying, Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uri Uriah, Did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel. So I'm going to skip all that. Then David said to Uriah, Wait here today also and tomorrow, and I will let you depart. Verse 15. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retreat from him, that he may be struck down and die. So it was while Joab besieged the city that he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew they were valiant men. I just want to go back one verse. In the morning it happened that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. So the story is, King David, it was hot. The, time at the, uh, the, the traditions of the Orient at that time was, They'll have a siesta, they'll have a snooze because it's blistering hot middle of the day. So in the evening he got up and then from his palace he looked, he saw beautiful woman. Now, every day we see, what do we do? We see, but what do we do? And that is the question. If we want more, we must be more. But sometimes we want more and we take more. So let's go to verse 12. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David and he came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished, and it grew up together with him, with his children. It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. And a traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare one for the wayfaring man had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come. So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die. And he shall restore fourfold for the lamb because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel. I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping. And gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. So I wasn't there in the meeting with the six packs and the three packs and the two packs. But I think it lines up with what God led me to the scriptures this morning. I had my wife ask me, you know, you ready? I said, yeah, I'm ready. I had my scriptures, everything lined up. But this morning God pressed upon me, go to the story. Go to the story. Now we're going to speak about seeing and vision. We want more wealth and we want more success in our relationships. Yes, no? Right? But how we get it is very important. On the sixth day, God looked and he saw all that he created and it was good. That word looked there, God looked upon or, or saw, is the same word saw that David did. He saw. It's written the same way in the, uh, in the Hebrew text as the one that God looked. Now Eve when she saw the fruit and it was good for food to make one wise and all of those kind of things, her saw was a different kind of saw. This is what God saw. God saw from a position of grace, from a position of authority, from a position of empowerment. Eve, when she saw, she saw from a position of need, lack. Lack that she created. There was no lack. I'm not repeating the sermon or the teaching, or the Bible studies that I did previously, please go have a watch on that because that will give more merit, will give more meat to what is coming forward now. Jesus says it like this in uh, in Matthew 15, 16. Sorry, Matthew 5, 27. Can we just quickly go to that? It's a bit of a Bible study. Anytime you see me, it's a Bible study. Anytime you see me, it's a Bible study. When I'm at work, I use scripture. When I'm angry, I use scripture. When I'm happy, I use scripture. 
because it's a form of self-correction. It's also a form of alignment. It's also a form of understanding where am I falling short and what needs to be done. 527 to 31. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than your whole body be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. And I will stop there. One of the things that came up in the, the men's camp on, on Friday these are some of the challenges we face in relationships. So we want success in relationships. What are threats to our relationships? What affects our vision so that we cannot see our provision? And this is very important. We always want more, want more, want more. God is saying, here is it, here is it, here is it. But because of the sin in our eyes, the lust in our heart, the misalignment of our actions, we cannot receive it, Brother Rocky. It's right here. God is saying, there's it here. Take it, take it. We can't see it. We can't feel it. We're blinded to it. We blind ourselves. Uh, just a quick exercise. Look under your right foot. Please, quickly, look under your right foot. Look. Look under your left foot. That's where the devil is. Romans 16, 19 to 20. Be excellent at what is good and be innocent of evil. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan. Yes, you will crush him underneath your feet. We hear the scriptures that talk about when we pray, we don't get because we, do, we, do, we don't ask according to God's will. We ask for our own lust, our own consumption. That's the whole point. We want more, but we want it for the wrong reasons. When Jesus says, when Jesus says, pluck out your eye, cut off your hand and cast it off, doesn't make sense because we can still see with the other eye. We can still do the wrong with the other hand. Yes, no? So what is he talking to here? What is he talking about? He is talking about what King David did. Spouses, husbands, wives, you may have friends, you may have relatives that will come. They'll talk to you nicely. King David didn't go and bring Bathsheba. He sent messengers. Yeah? Who's a messenger? That one that comes to the house, you'll have your tea and cake and coffee or vede or ladu, whatever you'll have, and you're making kuch kuch shuotaye. Kuch kuch is bad. It's important to share news. Hey, you heard what happened to so and so? The spouse passed away or they're having this problem, whatever it is. Stop there. You shared the essential information. Yeah, but you know what they did and how they did it. You know, we go like this. Because we don't want God to see. God sees everything. King David sent a letter with Uriah to the commander for his own death. Your own friend, your own people that come to your house are plotting your death. Jesus is saying, cut off all unproductive relationships. Cut off all unproductive associations. And cast it off. Why must we cast it off? You can cut it off. You'll go back later. You'll go to Tony Stark. Iron Man Studios. Where, where his place of work is. You'll say, put my arm back bionically. Put my eye back. Put artificial eye. We have to cast it off means you turn and you walk away. Abraham and Lot. When 
Lot separated from Abraham and that word there when Lot and Abraham separated, it was a tearing. It was like, it was like this, this arm was caught in a vice and, and uh, I was tied, my body was tied to a car and I was told from my arm, the arm is ripped, torn, severed. Sever unproductive relationships. Oh, but he was my friend. He's my cousin from way back. My auntie saw, my uncle, cut it off. Okay. Say after me. I want more. I have to be more. I have to cut off everything unproductive. It's not true. It's the gospel. It sounds nice, but Jesus said every tree that does not bear fruit will be cut, bound, and thrown into the fire. So that is why you do not have more. That is why I do not have more. When we're young, for, for you young kids that are not yet in the relationship, you want a boyfriend or you want a girlfriend, you want something in between. I don't know, I'm not here to judge. But whatever you want in your heart, you start off good. Then when you get into a relationship, the letters go, the chocolates, the flowers. In our days, we didn't have cell phone, no SMS, WhatsApp or anything like that. You have to make a phone call. Sometimes you must send one pigeon with a letter. Just depends, you know, where you were or whatever it is. Today you may have this thing where you're in al always in contact. Then when you're talking with your loved one, are you following with me, older people? Sounds familiar? Maybe it's a little bit rusty there in the back. I'm trying to bring it forward. Sister Juno, I'm trying to bring it forward. Then you're talking. My wife, uh, uh, that time she was my girlfriend. We're talking, we're listening to East Coast Radio. That time it was Radio Port and Tell. <laughs> Sunday evening, what songs you listening to? Now we're both listening to the radio. I can hear what she's, I'm asking her what she's. But we're just making conversation. Then you know, put the phone down. No, no, you put the phone down. No, you put the phone. No, you put the Father or mother comes, put the phone down, man. Go sleep. Tomorrow is school. Then, you propose, you get engaged, in love, going to the movies, doing things with the families, all of those things. You get married. Ooh, powerful, awesome. Not because of the honeymoon phase, but, you know, it's new. We're free from school. We're free from, from our previous responsibilities. We're with someone we love. Hey, darling, that TV looks nice. Let's go buy it. You're just out of college. You just started working. You don't even have, have enough money for transport or travel. You want to go buy things. But HP makes it so easy. Ask me, I know. I failed. Wrote a book, Failing to Success. First chapter is out. Go read it. By the fridge. We're seeing things. We're making provision from ourselves, not from God's provision. Are we catching it? Remember, we're still married, newly married. Everything is lovey-dovey. Darling, I went to work. This happened. Wife come, she went to work. This happened. All good. One, two, three, four years ago. Debts are piling up. Poor management of money. Poor management of time. Poor management of relationship. What's wrong with you? How many times I must tell you it's, it's wrong? You put, not enough salt here. I'm talking about myself. I'm telling you how I behave. Not how I am, how I behave. And the problem is sometimes how we behave is, is, the, is who we are in our mind. Life goes on. You know, you're no longer in love with each other. You're no longer in love with the idea of marriage. Now you are bound to each other by law and by society. <laughs> you know? Um, they say there's three rings. What's the three rings? Anybody knows what's the three rings? 
Thank you, Brother Rocky. At least Rocky knows the stuff, right? Let's give it up for Brother Rocky, please. Give him, give him a hand. <laughs> engagement ring. We spoke about the engagement. Then is the wedding ring. And then we are suffer ring. Right? Then what happens? Bitterness comes in. So what are some of the challenges? What are some of the challenges that face us in our relationships? And you can have all the money in the world that is not wealth. Money is not wealth. We'll, tell, we'll, we'll come to what wealth is just now. Some of the threats to our relationship are bitterness, unforgiveness, unfulfillment, which may result in adultery, domination, righteousness of self. King David is a man, written to us as a man after God's own heart. But he looked and he saw and he brought, he slept with, conceived, and this is like your days of our life. I don't know what soap operas they are today. But in my days, it was days of our life and bold and beautiful and all that, right? So what King David did? How old I am, Rocky? King David said, Uriah, go home, man. Because now he wants to cover up. He wants to cover up his wrongdoing. So that the timing is such that, no, Uriah, you go to your wife, then the baby is yours. That plan didn't work. Because Uriah was an upright man. How can I go to my house? The Ark of the Covenant is on the field. My, my brothers are in the field. They're losing their life for God's work. Whatever that was, they war. What does David do? He goes to plan C. His plan B didn't work. <laughs> he made the lady pregnant. He's, he, he, that's his plan A. His plan B didn't work to send Uriah. Now he goes to plan C. Kill him. I hope and pray that you reduce the number of people that are close, that come closely to your home. Because those people that are physically close, they find their heart. They have deceit, death ready for you, for your kids. God says to, to David, come on, man, if you needed more, I would have given you more. More what? More wives. He could have had wives. That's his right. He was a king. At that time, he could have how many wives he wanted. But God would have given him more understanding, more love for his wife. You know, we read in the scripture that uh, we forgot our first love. Sometimes we must do the things of our first love. Go to the movies. We can't go to the movies. The children are here. Send them away. Babysitter, relatives, whatever it is. You've got to make time. Quality time. We talk about work-life balance. There is no such thing as work-life balance. You've got to make it balance. And how do you make it balance? Through God's wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and he will show you how to have that quality time. Um, husbands make the excuse, my wife, she's old now, need to get a new model, trade in. Why? What about you? Don't you need a trade in? How much older are you? So if two trade-ins happen now, who's gonna, the new buyer is going to be stuck with old stuff. Too much problems. Hidden oil leaks. <laughs> be more. How do we be more? God says to David, if you wanted more, you should have asked for more. The problem with the flesh, it was earlier, either in the word or some way it came up in, in invocation. I don't know where, but it was mentioned earlier on. That Let's start with creating me a clean heart. We want to have a clean heart. But understand this, you're already clean because of the blood of Jesus. But our flesh man is, is kicking, is fighting his death. The spirit man must rise up. 
our spirit must rise up. In what? In fighting? No. No, 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 no. Father, I lift my hands to you. I lift my heart to you. I lift my mind to you. Raise me out of this understanding that's keeping me bound to death. That's important. Maybe once a year, those of us that's married for a few years, once a year maybe we'll buy flowers for the wife. Maybe. I don't know. Sometimes we may buy it as a cover-up because you did something wrong. But sometimes genuinely, darling, this is for you. Why have we lost that spark? Because we get caught up. And this is a distraction of the enemy. Although he's under your feet, we're going to come to this, the, the, the solution just now. Okay, let me tell you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Rulers in, of darkness in high places. Put on the whole armor of God. But that's the important thing. When our friends come, the bottle comes out. You'll know what bottle, not the Coke bottle or the whatever it is, the other bottle. Whatever actions we do with those that come to hold us in a place of bondage, change that one action. Hey, I can't do it. That's right, we can't do it. It is only in and through the finished work of the cross that we can do it. It is done through us. Because the Spirit will guide us into all truth. Is this interesting so far? Our children need to see a good model. Whatever level, if this is the level we are at, our kids will start at this level. Whether it's our education, whether it's finances, whether it's relationship, whether it's how we treat people, they will start off here. They can either go higher or lower. So the lower level education they have about these things, that much more they have to overcome. So let's ask God to raise the standard within us. Amen? Right. Ephesians 5, verse 8 onwards. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfaithful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead. And Christ will give you light. Do we have some understanding of how we can have success in our relationships? Make quality time. Cut off unproductive relationships. How do you know the relationship is unproductive? If there's no fruit. Good fruit. Fruit that is full of grace and truth. Righteousness. Go to Ephesians 5.8. Read that, my brothers and sisters. That's the answer. Husbands, are we doing what Jesus did? Ephesians 5. 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is head of, of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, 
and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This verse, a man shall leave his mother and father, is from Genesis, when God brought Eve to Adam. That is God's blueprint for marriage. A man will leave his mother and father. Sometimes mother and father is still living here. It comes out through here. And that's why there's separation here. Cut it off. Me, I'm an animal. I'm brutal. Things that are not good for me, I kill it. I move on. I got a Ginsu knife. You know Ginsu knife, you remember that advert, so sharp it is? I kill it. Because I realized things were pulling me down. I'm fighting with my family because of things living in my head rent free. Evict them. Don't provide alternate space. Evict them. Laugh, Shamin. <laughs> Laugh, it's okay. So, When Adam was and Eve were brought together, the last verse says they in, in, I think, Genesis 2, they were naked and not ashamed. But after they ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they were naked and were ashamed. God came in the afternoon. Hey, Adam. Come, come. How are you? Let's do a report. Where are you? How? Oh, Adam. Adam, he was hiding. Why are you hiding? No, I'm naked. Who told you you were naked? So sin brings that awareness. Sin has no power. Sin uses the law and gets its strength. Why was, man, why was woman created? To be a comparable helpmate to men. Anywhere I go, I take my wife. Not that I don't have an excuse to do anything funny, but she's my partner. She's suffering with me. <laughs> so she must also enjoy the rewards with me. So if we're going for a Gounders Bunny, we're together. We're going for a meeting, we're together. Because when I die, not if, and if I die before her, she must be established, she must be successful, she must take care of herself. You don't want somebody else coming raising your kids. Or, or women, the same thing with your husbands. You, get, you need to give them that freedom. That freedom to understand that you love them. Not that they under... We saw the devil was under our feet, right? Don't put your husband there, woman. That's why. That's why we have sometimes bitterness and strife. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Because um, in your body, psychosomatically or physiologically, whatever the word is, I don't know that word. But there's a word that means now I'm thinking, I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm angry. I didn't release, I didn't forgive. Nighttime, I'm going to bed. If you're lucky, you know, you got two rooms, you go sleep separately from your wife. If you're not lucky, you go sleep on the sofa. If you're not, if you're even worse, you're already sleeping on the floor in the same room or you're sleeping on the same bed, but you got a wall of pillows. Yes, no? Nobody, y'all don't have that problem, eh? <laughs> y'all don't know of anybody who's going through that? Bitterness. So we need to walk in love. We need to walk in grace. We cannot do it, because if we could do it, we would have done it. So God empowers us. But we have to choose for that action. I will close with this. We will do wealth another day. Jesus says it like this. Uh, let's go to what Jesus says. Matthew 15, 16 to 20. Either the clock is um, moving too fast or <laughs> I don't know where the time went. <laughs> right. Matthew 15, 16. So Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? 
But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornicators, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. So we take the traditions of men, we make it more holy, but the things that really corrupt us, that are binding us, that are deceiving us, we continue with it. So if we want to speak good things, now there's two ways to speak good things. Just from the lips, the service, it sounds nice, but there's bitterness with it. Have you ever bought a, a strawberry, pick and pay, or Woolworths, wherever, wherever you buy your strawberries from? Hey, it looks so nice and deep red. Take a bite. Mmm, sour. You ever had that experience? Yes, I'm hearing a few yeses. Looks good, but not good. That's one way to speak. The other way to speak is you've got it built up. Go back to Psalms. Go back to Proverbs. Bind up God's word in your heart. But we as New Testament believers in, in God, that means we are believers of Christ. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. All the time he's bringing a word. All the time he's bringing something. Meditate on that. I meditate on God's word day and night, not with my Bible, but in my mind. God, what does this mean? Why? How? Where? What? Who? All the time. And at the most random time, when my brain is sensitive, or my mind is sensitive, it drops in my spirit what it means, what this means, what that means. Sometimes we're too busy. You cannot make a five o'clock morning prayer meeting. You cannot uh, a, a pray time, quiet time with God. At work, you're so stressed. In your stress, Lord, come. In your time of poverty, Lord, come. Not come that is far away, he's here. Come be a reality in my mind so my heart can change. When I change how I believe, I will change how I think. When I change how I think, I'll change how I speak. When I change how I speak, I'll change what I do, how I do, so I can be more. So when I be more, automatically the fruit is for me to have more. Got it? To have more, I must be more. I must be more like how God created me. He created me to work and operate from a position of rest. Jesus paid the price for sin. Sin is not God's issue. Sin was never God's issue. You want to know how powerful God is? Lucifer only thought, in, in the Bible, I can't recall the exact scripture, but it, uh, Lucifer talks about his five I wills. I think it's Ezekiel or Isaiah, I'm not sure who. I will, I will, I will. The writer says, and you thought these things. He thought it and he was struck out of heaven. That for me is the full stop. Genesis 1, 2. 1, 1 and 1, 2. That's when he was cast down. Okay, that's another story for another day. What we think is very important. What we watch, our cell phones, make quiet time. During load shedding, it was so peaceful, Pastor Andrew. Sometimes we'll put the candles on. Right? Light the candles. You don't put the candles on. Sorry, my mistake. You light the candles. We're playing nine cards. We're having family time. Because the one-eyed monster, the TV, as much as it can be useful, just like AI, AI can be useful, but it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God only got the knowledge of good for us. Amen? So we got to make quiet time. Watch what we, we bring, what associations we bring. That bad language, there's people that use bad language and we tolerate it. Vulgar jokes, rude jokes. Cut it off. Cut those people off. Because why? It's there in our subconscious. When you're sleeping, it's, it's, it's growing. You catch me? So, believe more. Think more. 
speak more, do more according to God's will for our life. What is God's will? Only to believe in Jesus. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Have more, be more. Have more, be more. If I want to have more, I must be more. You don't know how to be, we ask God. Amen. Shall we bow our hearts, close our eyes? Let us all stand actually. We're going to stand united in faith. We're going to stand united in prayer. We're going to stand united in, in believing. In believing. Heavenly Father, we believe once again, Lord, that you have shone the light on a very important subject. The institution of marriage. Marriage is what we want. The partners we want later on in life are outside because we've got bitterness, we've got unforgiveness, partners of corruption, partners of seduction, partners in the workplace, partners at school, at university. We have all of this chaos. But we believe, Lord, that we are sanctified and sealed and we are in the Holy Spirit. Every one of you, raise your hand. Raise your hand to God today because we want more. We're going to ask God to give us more. Father, as we raise our hands to you in submission and surrender, Lord, we ask that you give us the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding to love our spouses, to love our children, to not provoke anyone to wrath. You have given man dominion over the earth, over the fish of the sea, over every creeping thing, but you never gave man dominion over men. Because you want us to be in relationship. Help us, Lord. Guide us. Show us today. Even now, show us where we can improve at least one thing. And how we need to improve that one thing in our relationships with our families, Lord. Help us, Lord, to understand who we need to cut off. Give us the strength, Lord, to say no. Give us, Lord, the wisdom of who to keep. Give us a discerning heart to measure when words come out from somebody's mouth, whether it's of you or it's of death, everything that's of death, remove it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. As we continue today throughout the day, Lord, let this word ruminate in our mind. Let your word ruminate in our mind. Holy Spirit, you will trigger things. Let us grow. Even if it's one thing a day, Lord, that we can see. But you see the finished work, Lord. But we can't see it. Help us to see what you see, Father, so that we would be encouraged. Father, I speak joy, peace, happiness into every marriage here, into every family here, into every broken home. I speak restoration, Lord. Your grace, Father. Your covering, Father. For everyone who doesn't know you and wants to have a relationship, Lord, I tell them now to just say that Jesus is the Son of God. He died and He rose again. And you are now saved. That they must believe in their heart and confess with their mouth, Lord. That, Father, even as we walk out today, Father, you, you will take us to new heights. 2024 is coming to an end. But help us to reflect where we can improve in the next 60 days, Lord. The next 90 days. The next 120 days. So when the new year comes, down, comes about, we don't need to make a new year's resolution. Because we already made a God's resolution. Today. Today. Father, I just pray that your word will find an abiding place in our heart, Lord. And that you'd help us to be the light to our neighbors, to our friends, to our work colleagues. So they will say, what is it in your relationship that you have? You're going through the same stresses as me. But what do you have? I want it. I, I don't know what you have, but it's so good. I want it. Father, help us be the salt and be the light and the love of Jesus in this world today. We ask all his mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. amen. We thank God for the ministry of the word. We pray that the Lord will just bless his channel and use him in the days that lie ahead. Won't you receive the benediction and now may the threefold blessings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest on upon each and every one of us this day always, even till Jesus comes and everybody said, Amen. God bless your church.